All right, let's talk about right triangle trigonometry. So we're in this first section, we're gonna talk about some of the vocabulary. So let's jump right into it. You see we have a, um, a right triangle here. A right triangle, of course, is one that has a 90 degree angle. Uh, typically the 90 degree angle is labeled with the letter C. And then little c is across from that right angle, straight across. And then we have angle A with side A straight across from it, and B and B straight across from one another. Now, of course, the longest side is called the hypotenuse. The longest side is called the hypotenuse, so let's write that in. That's the longest side, and it's also across from the, from the 90. Uh, the opposite side, I'm not going to be using the word across from a lot in this section. Instead, I'm going to use the word opposite. So opposite means across from the specific angle. Now, this theta is a Greek symbol, theta, and it usually is used for angles. So we would say side, this side is opposite angle theta. So um, let's fill that in now. So the opposite side would be across from an angle. So for example, A is opposite angle A. Okay, now adjacent. You might have someone sitting adjacent to you. What does that mean? Next to, next to. So this would be a side next to an angle. Okay, so we would say B is adjacent to angle A. Let's come over here to the, uh, to the diagram here. You see how side B is next to angle A. That's adjacent. So down here we have the adjacent side to our theta angle, wherever that is. All right, so we have some of that vocabulary out of our way. Now we have these six trig functions that are ratios of sides of a triangle. They are ratios of sides of a triangle. Uh, and the six trig functions are sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent, quite a mouthful there. Now, early in your math career, you may have done sine, cosine, and tangent, but we're adding in these other functions, which are reciprocals, they, and, and I'll talk about that in a moment. You can see all the fractions that, are, that we create using the different combinations of sides. I'm not gonna go through them all, but sine is the ratio of the opposite side length to the hypotenuse length. So what do we mean by that? So sine, here's my theta, is the opposite length, whatever it is, maybe five, divided by the hypotenuse, whatever it is, maybe 10. So we would say the sine is five over 10 in my simple example there, or one half, five tenths is one half. So these trig functions are ratios of sides. Now it doesn't matter how scaled um, large these um, triangles are, similar triangles will always have the same trig ratio. So in my example, five is to 10 as one is to two, right? So it wouldn't matter if it, how big the triangle was, if they were similar, if they were the physically the same shape, the trig ratios will be all the same. Okay, so a couple things I wanted to mention. So Katoa is something that a lot of students like to use to try to remember that sine is opposite over hypotenuse and that cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse and that tangent is opposite over adjacent. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So I do wanna comment on that. That's only legs of the triangle. Now legs of the triangle are the two sides that are not the hypotenuse. So these are called the legs and tangent uses the legs and we like our tan legs, right? We, we all like our tan legs. No one likes to have uh, crazy white legs like, like me, of course. Uh, so we like our tan legs. It's a simple way to remember that tangent uses the two legs when you're creating um, the fractions. Now reciprocals. So tangent, is the reciprocal. That means it's the same fraction just upside down. It's flipped over for cotangent. So here's how we're gonna write that in our notes. Tangent is one over cotangent. Sine is one over cosecant theta. Cosine 
is 1 over secant theta. These are called identities, reciprocal identities. And if you take a pre-cal or an and or a trig course, you're going to work a lot with all kinds of identities. So this is just one of them. These are how some of the trig functions relate as reciprocals of one another. All right, so here we have a simple example, and I'm going to correct this. This should be C, and this should be B here, folks. Okay. Um, all right. So the tangent, or I'm sorry, the sine, let's start with the sine of theta. So you have to find theta. Theta is right here, and you have to imagine yourself sitting down there at that angle. Now, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Look up in your notes there. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So here's my angle. So the side opposite would be 3, and then the hypotenuse is 5. So we're going to come over here, and we're going to fill in 3 fifths for sine. Now, cosine, cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that would be 4 fifths. You see how we do that? And then remember, the tangent involves the legs, the legs only, and it's opposite over adjacent. So that's 3 fourths. Now, often when I set these up for students, I set them up very, um, very nicely for you in that uh, these two functions are reciprocals. So all you do is flip over uh, the flip over the fraction. So it becomes five thirds. This becomes five fourths, and then this one becomes four thirds for cotangent. All right, so those are the trig ratios for that triangle. Now, in the next section, we're going to put those to work for us. So here our goal is to just understand how to find them. All right, so let's do another example. You might want to just pause the video and see if you can come up with these six trig functions. Okay, three, two, one, pause. And, okay, so the sine of angle A. Where is angle A? Uh-oh, angle A is way up high here this time. So I'm going to draw a little person up here because we have to imagine that we're looking out this direction from angle A. That's important to realize where your angle is because that helps you figure out the opposite and adjacent uh, information. Now, remember, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. You work with these enough, you'll have them memorized, trust me. Uh, you can also use that SOCATO to get yourself started. Uh, this is going to be 20 over 29. Cosine would be 21 over 29. Tangent is going to be opposite over adjacent leg. And then, again, I've set all these up nicely for you so that all you have to do is flip over the fractions to get the other three trig functions, 21 over 20. Isn't that easy? Okay, so let's throw you a little bit of a curveball here. Given that sine of theta is two-thirds. Find the values for the other five. So this one is two-thirds. So where do we go from there? We got to get the other five. Well, we don't know where theta is, and it really doesn't matter where you put it. You can put it down here. We'll just call that theta. So this is where our person would be sitting, right here. Okay, and we just, we're given that the sign is two-thirds. So that means two goes here, and three would go there. Now, we don't know how big this triangle is, but we know it's a two to three ratio. From here to here, it's a two to three ratio. So how do we get this third side, folks? Hopefully you're screaming at your computer right now. Pythagorean theorem. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared will work for any right triangle. So two squared plus B squared equals three squared. B squared, if we subtract four on both sides, I'll show my work here for you. We get 5, so b equals the square root of 5. So we put a square root of 5 down here. So we had to calculate it using Pythagorean's theorem. So sometimes you do have to sort of complete the triangle. All right, so that means cosine is radical 5 over 3. Tangent is 2 over radical 5. And then we flip all of these over for our reciprocal functions. Now, there's something else I need to talk about before we go on here, because a couple of these answers are not simplified. Do you guys remember? You're not supposed to leave radicals in the denominator. Not supposed to leave radicals in the denominator. So I'm going to multiply by the number 1 
and I get 2 radical 5 over the square root of 25 is 5. Over here, I'm going to multiply by radical 5 over radical 5, and I get 3 radical 5 over 5. All right, so I simplified. It's called rationalizing the denominator on those two. Okay, so here we have another triangle. Let's, uh, I don't know what this is here. Let's change it to cosine theta. Uh, sine, again, let's put our theta up here just for something different. Okay, it really doesn't matter where you put it because the opposite is radical 5 and the hypotenuse is 4 according to this question. So I do have to figure out this other side using Pythagorean's theorem. So a squared plus the square root of 5 squared is 5 equals 16. That's 4 squared. So a equals the square root of 11. You guys have worked, hopefully, with the Pythagorean theorem enough that you don't need to sh have me show you the every single step. So there's radical 11. Now let's fill in cosine. Cosine would be radical 11 over 4. Why did I do cosine first? It's because secant is the reciprocal. That's how I generally do it, is I, I find my so sine, cosine, and tangent, and then I just flip over those fractions for the appropriate ones. And from this perspective, tangent will be opposite over adjacent, which is radical 5 over radical 11. And just like the last question, I am going to rationalize some of these. I'm going to multiply there, and I get radical 55 over 11. It's probably a better way to write that. Radical 11 over radical 11, and I get 4 radical 11 over 11 for that one. Okay, moving on here, folks. We have um, a trig function given to you as a decimal this time. That's okay. They can be decimals uh, because fractions are... are just a one way to write a number, right? You can write them as a decimal also. So I like to think about this as 0.32 over 1, or you can think about it as 32 over 100. But the cosine of beta, that's another Greek symbol, beta. Uh, well, I'm going to put it down there. So cosine is 0.32. So I'll put my 0.32 here, and I'll put my 1 there. And then I need to figure out that other side. So I do 0 0.32 squared plus b squared equals 1 squared. So I'm going to go to my handy-dandy calculator. I'm typing 1 minus 0 0.32 squared into the calculator, and I get uh, b squared equals 0 0.8976. And now I'm going to square root that. Sorry, I probably should have had these done before I started the video. b equals 0 0.9474. So now we can fill in our trig functions. This would be 0 0.9474 divided by 1. So we don't even need to have that 1 there, right? Tangent is going to be opposite. That would be 9474 divided by my 0 0.32. I'm going to go in my calculator and go ahead and simplify this to be 2.96. And then cotangent would be the reciprocal. So I'm actually just going to have my calculator tell me straight away what the reciprocal of that would be. And it would be 0 0.338. 0 0.338. So I have a couple of thought-provoking questions, hopefully thought-provoking questions here for you. And they are, if the sine of some angle is always one-half, it's guaranteed to be one-half, what can you tell me about the leg that's opposite and the hypotenuse. All right, so if the sine of angle A is guaranteed to be a 1 divided by 2, what does that mean about the hypotenuse and that leg? Now, a lot of students, when I went through this, these notes in person in class, they were telling me that means it's a length of 1 and a length of 2, but that's not quite right. Because I said earlier, we don't know the size of the triangle. All we know is that the hypotenuse is twice as big as the leg. That's what you want to say here. Or you could say the leg is half the size of the hypotenuse. So let's write that down. I think that's kind of neat to think about that, is that the hypotenuse is twice the size of the leg, or the leg is half the hypotenuse. 
Because then look at this next question. I say, all right, so if the sine is one half, when the hypotenuse is eight, let's draw that. We got eight here. Here's my right triangle. What is this leg over here if this is my angle A? It's four. It's got to be four centimeters because we know the sine is one half. We can go ahead and say that that triangle um, is has a leg of four and a hypotenuse of eight, and then we could use Pythagorean theorem to figure out the, the other leg. All right, so these are my notes for this first section, which is just defining these trig functions. My next video will be um, going through and actually using these to solve some of the triangles. All right, good luck on your assignment, and until next time.